All right. Well, welcome to the video here today. I am really excited to say I have Alex Bauman. Is that how you pronounce your last name? Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Alex and me just literally met. So for those who don't know, I do fully free custom running plans for the reason being that running has really improved my life significantly. And, you know, I used to be a track coach for three years, just so you know, Alex, I, I you know, coach track at the middle school and high school level. But after graduating college, that was like a, a side gig for me in college. It was really difficult to work a full-time job and also have the opportunity to coach track. And so because of that, I created Run Brighter, my digital brand. And one of the really cool things about it is giving people free running tips and advice through my content. But I figure to really just take it another, another step forward, I understand that some people, the best they, way they learn and the best way they're motivated is by having someone who takes a role as a coach, who gives them direct one-on-one -on -one advice and feedback based on their experience. So yeah, that's what we're doing for Alex here today. And we open this up to really anyone who is, is looking at improving their life with running. But you know, Alex, I know you had messaged me on Instagram. You mentioned some goals with running. You know, you saw the New York City Marathon that really inspired you. Um, but yeah, let's, let me turn it to you. Let me hear first, like the reason that you want to get into running and, uh, you know, what we can start working on a plan and seeing how I can help you here, man. Yeah. Um, I, right before college, I get, like I was in high school, I was very overweight, similar to the size I am now. Mm -hmm. Um, and I started playing rugby and rugby is like 60 to 70% just cardio. And you know, I started playing and I quickly lost all that weight. And, you know, I was instantly feeling better about myself. You know, I have anxiety. So my anxiety attacks basically like went away. Um, and then ever since the pain, and so like at my most physical fit, I could maybe run like six miles in about 40 minutes. Um, so when the pandemic hit, you know, I got less and less active and I put on all that weight again. Um, and every time I've attempted to lose weight, I've often tried to do it through running, but just like, you know, going for runs on like a semi-regular basis. And always around like the three week mark, I'd fall off and, you know, gain that weight back, if not more. And so, you know, I figured, you know, running and that high cardio is going to be the best way. And I think the best way to stay consistent is, you know, do a big goal of running a marathon in a year. And then, you know, each month or so up and up until then, you know, running at least one race. Awesome, man. Well, first of all, thank you so much for opening up about the story. Um, you know, I think, being honest and opening up about some of the reasons that you got into running in the first place and then some setbacks you've had that can that really helps me like understand what we can do to help make this more of like a lifestyle rather than like a quick fix of something yeah. that you want to improve for yourself in, in life because I think so many people right they get into running and it's fun for a couple of weeks and exciting and you have this positive change maybe it comes after new year's and you're like okay like new year new me but then eventually it's hard to keep yourself committed and um but I do think that what you're talking about the fact that one you now have this big goal of doing the marathon next year that is going to really help you and then also some doing some more races um before that even will also help you because I think you know, when you sign up for a race and it's 12 months away, it's really easy to procrastinate some of the, yeah. like six to nine months. And then in the last minute, um, you know, get into it, but it sounds like for you, it's like more just about getting in good shape. And then, yeah, you know, for you, I think what will really help you maintain that weight loss is having that running lifestyle where, okay, yeah. that's the way you ran a race. Well, now what can you do next? Do you want to start trying to run faster times? Do you want to do different races? Do yeah. Travel with it, whatever it is. So, It'll be your journey, man, and you'll do what you like. But, you know, I'm here to help you make sure you're running at, you know, the right volume, running smart, um, you know, making sure you don't overtrain, but at the same time that you are improving and that you are seeing some of these goals come to fruition. Um, so I'd be curious, when was the last time that you've actually ran? Have you been running at all recently? Or was it just after the marathon that you're like, I want to get back into this? I attempted to go for a run and like try to get back into it. I want to say two to three weeks ago. And I did like one rock walk and run where I mainly walked and like did 40 seconds of running. Mm -hmm. um, and then I just fell off again immediately. Mm -hmm. um, so then yesterday with the marathon, that's when like it clicked, like, oh, that would be a good like overall goal. And then doing those like sub goals. Yeah. The race. Um, yeah. so I'm pretty out of shape at the moment. Okay. And and hey man, like the good news is with with running, like 
you can be so out of shape. Like you'd be the most out of shape person on the planet, which you're not, I can tell. But, yeah. but my whole point is you could be. And I do truly think with time, patience and consistency, you can really get yourself to the right place with it. Now, um, you said two to three weeks ago, you were doing like a run walk. How many miles were you able to actually do with a run walk? I think I did like about two. I can look, I have it on Strava. Okay. Um, I think it was like 2.5. 2.5 it was nope it was 2.03 um with a weight pace of 14 and 14.07 and about 28 minutes 28 minutes okay i'm just taking some notes here so i can reference all of this okay cool and um as far as like your peak with running um like i know you mentioned you've gotten into it for a couple weeks and then kind of some setbacks. Was there ever like a period in your life you were able to commit to it for maybe a couple of months? I know you mentioned playing rugby in the past. Yeah. So I don't know if with that you were running more consistently or maybe after rugby you were running more consistently. I, I wasn't going for like runs in any way like this, but, mm -hmm. you know, after training, uh, you know, practice three days a week, you know, two of those days we would do, you know, a good mile long run around the field. Um, mm -hmm. And then in the mornings we would do like a three mile run um and so that was the most frequent i would be running okay um and i'm not fast but i always had like good endurance so i'd okay. be with the faster people up front because i could maintain my pace pretty well gotcha gotcha no that's good to know cool um now i'm curious too like with the commitment issues that you've had in the past what would you say has forced you to take steps away from running after doing it for a bit is it more like like, have you had like soreness injuries? Has it just been like a mental thing where you like struggle to continually do it? Um, you know, anything else? Um, I'd be curious. I would say a mixture of like three things. So there was one period where I was running for three weeks and I started getting like a pain in my knee and I've never had knee injury. It's not there now. Um, so I definitely felt like I overextended myself and I just was not able to get back on it. Um, there was another time where I just got like, really lazy about it and was like oh i'll do this later i'll do this later and never did it and again fell off mm -hmm. um and then like something i kind of ran into when i would you know kind of fell off would be like i got tired of the route i was doing i do go into the city quite frequently like i'm going in like a meet i'm jumping in the car and going to the train station like right after this ends mm -hmm. um so i go into the city quite frequently um but it's like a mix of downtown but not like new york city downtown mm -hmm. okay cool yeah, I mean, I think with, I mean, it's good to hear that you're on Strava. I don't know if you've ever with Strava have used this, but there are different like routes you can find within your area. Um, oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, and I could I could walk you through it another time if if yeah. uh, you're unable to find it. I would just play around with it. But like, there's an area within Strava where you can go to like routes, like nearby routes, and you can put in the amount of miles that you're looking at running in that given day whether that's like two miles or 20 like there's a different route for that and you could start it where your home is or you could start it in a different area within where you live but mm -hmm. there's all these different recommendations simply that are just made by runners who do these routes um so i'd say that's a really good way to find new places to run obviously you can go on google and do some research and even like using tiktok as like an algorithm you know yeah. Uh, engine to find some different places so i think that'll help that with the knee pain i, I want to talk about that too um was that just like a one-time occurrence or has that happened to you more than once with, with the knee? it's happened on three separate occasions there was one time in 2019 for whatever reason i walked the whole length of central park okay and i had like bad knee pain for like a week mm -hmm. um and then two separate t attempts to go on regular runs it kind of came up gotcha. but it was like when i was attempting to run like four miles every day Mm -hmm. Or at least three, at most three times, at least three times a week. So like, I definitely was overextending myself. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. Um, and I could, I could finish the run, but it was like afterwards, like, oh, I don't want to like make it worse. Yeah. No, I get that completely. Do you stretch before or after you run at all? When, when, when I was active, I was like stretching before regularly. Okay. Not after though, or? No. Okay. I've always been bad about stretching after, <laughs> even with rugby. I was like always bad at it. Cause I, when I started playing, I had really, really bad chin splints. So I'm, try to stretch that out mm -hmm. i'm the same way man like after you work out sometimes and like you're really tired it's just really easy to like jump in the shower and then, like, yeah. the couch but like i know that if i want to like recover quicker from soreness 
or like to prevent injuries, I like have to force myself to stretch after. I would argue that it's more important to stretch after than before a run, especially yeah. like those easier runs. I honestly don't ever stretch before, but after you're going to want to make sure to do that to really okay. help your um, knee pain from not happening. Other things you can do is like icing. Um, I don't know if you have access to this, but like. I have Tiger Bomb if that helps. I have it somewhere over here on my shelf. Okay. Yeah, no, that can help. I mean, there's there's lots of different resources, but, you know, I think there's a lot out there and then people just don't always utilize them. So I think mm -hmm. like, making sure you're using those resources, that's going to be crucial. Um, now, you know, one thing I, of course, want to do for you, I want to make you a plan, man. And like, I want to get yeah. an idea of what is going to make the most sense for this plan. Um, because I think the big, a, a problem with plans um, for a lot of people is the fact that they get it, but it's not specific to them. Yeah. You know, maybe for you, you're someone who wants to only run a certain amount of days. And then there's a lot of plans online that are more days than you want. Maybe it's less days than you want. Maybe it's more miles or less, whatever it is. But I want to get an understanding of what is going to be right for, for Alex and, and not for anyone else. And that's what I kind of want to talk about here. So for one, um, I think what's good for me to know is I know you mentioned like a, like a, having like a monthly race um, set up. Do you have any races that you're currently signed up for coming up or? Um, I'm going to sign up. I get paid in like five days. So I'm going to sign up for the um, New York Roadrunners four mile, like New Year's Eve Central Park run. Like, oh, okay. yeah, like right before the run starts, uh, it's like the f fireworks go off and it's like New Year's. Yep. I know exactly the race. I'm I'm thinking about doing it, but I'll have to see what my New Year's plans are. But yeah. Um, I'm trying to do the nine plus one for, I did the New York city marathon this year, as you know, but I'd like to do it next year as well. Um, or at least have the option. So if you do the nine races through the road runners, I don't know if you know this, but that game... so I saw that and I was kind of confused because it said like 2022. So I wasn't sure if I would do nine plus one in 2023 before the marathon, if you can qualify for the 2023 so, one. Yeah. So just so you know, um, the ways of getting in the race, cause that's obviously important. I'm happy to walk you through that. So nine plus one, the way it works, it is nine New York road runners and then one volunteer event. Now, mm -hmm. what they do though is, you know, you're not going to be able to do nine plus one for 2023, 23 is mm -hmm. fortunately, if you start doing the nine plus one for 2024, what it would be is from January to December of 2023, oh, okay. those races to allow you to get into 2024, but if you do want to get into 2023, there are other ways. The way I got in, I got pretty lucky. I, I did it through the lottery. Um, I saw that. Mm -hmm, which yeah. I'm not sure when that opens. It probably like December, January. Um, okay. I would keep a lookout for that. And when I hear about it, I could also message you and be like, hey, man, like lottery open. Feel free to. Oh, jump. that'd be that'd be uh, sweet. I also saw you can pay to join to join the race, too. Yeah. I'm thinking that would be my last resort. Exactly. So that could be your last yeah. resort where it's like raising money for a specific charity. And, um, you know, if you're able to do that, I think it's like a couple grand you have to raise. And then if you do that, then you automatically can get in. So I would try the lottery first. If you don't get in through the lottery, then, um, you know, doing the um, charity is always a great option too. Or there's also the option of doing a different marathon first. But I mean, if, if New York City is like that one that you're set on, I mean, hopefully, um, you know, one of those two options will be able to work for you. Okay, sweet. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. But okay, cool. So it's good to know your first race, it's going to be on New Year's Eve, through the New York Roadrunners, Central Park, good race, you probably have a little bit of hills there, but it's not gonna be too bad. It is a four mile race. And cool. so what, what we're going to do is we're going to make sure that you are able to be at a point by the time that race starts to just like, run it without stopping, I think is a good goal. Um, mm -hmm. It sounds like right now, like doing two, two, two and a half miles, um, you know, you probably need to stop and walk for a little bit, but if we can get you to that point, I think in, in two months, I think that's definitely possible. So the plan that I'll make for you, it's going to be really set up and customized for that race. And then from there, like we'll meet again and talk about like what your next race is and continually to build yourself up build up your endurance for the New York city marathon. And, you know, I think you doing like a race that's shorter in distance first is really smart. Cause there's some people like their first race they ever do is the New York city marathon. Like, uh, yeah, no, that, that sounds dumb. <laughs> yeah. It's like, I don't know if you're a roller coaster guy, but like, imagine going on like King to Kai, first roller them, yeah. coaster. 
you know, you're not going to do that, but you yeah. know, stepping stones, it's going to be, it's going to be big for you. Um, but yeah, let me ask you this. So how, like, what's your normal like week look like? I mean, I assume you um, work like a right now I'm, job. I'm unemployed. unemployed. Um, I just had an interview today that actually went really well. Um, so I have a lot of free time. Okay. <laughs> um, normally, otherwise I'm going to be really only able to run at night. Okay. Uh, which is, I'm really not a morning person. So that's, would be my go-to anyways i run a night myself so i get that man. yeah um but yeah mainly at night will be like the when i'm free to run um ideally if i can do it in a day that also be good um but yeah you know once again i don't want to commit too much to like doing a day because if i get a job and i can't run during a day i don't want to like go off my whole balance yeah no i get that man um okay cool well that is good to know and do you have besides obviously right now you have a lot of free time but when you do end up um, going back into the workforce, are, are there other things outside of work that do take up a lot of time in your life? Like, are you in a relationship? Do you spend a lot of time with family? Do you have other passions that, that take up time? Uh, I do a lot of like Jewish advocacy type stuff or just hanging out with um, friends. Nice. So that takes up a good chunk of my time. I don't see it conflicting too much. Like if it did conflict, I'd just make sure to go running before I would go out. Mm hmm okay cool 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 i'm jewish i too. might also if i move back to the city within the next year I start playing rugby again but again that would only really like a bunch of the guys from my old team in the city ran the marathon yeah no i mean i think playing a sport like rugby i mean as long as you don't injure yourself tackling yeah. so hard or something like that's good to have like i think like just doing running like i mean we can obviously accom we can accommodate that and make that happen but i think like having other activities that are going to help your, your big goal of, of course, like losing weight. Yeah. Like, it's, it's good. I mean, really like having you move as much as possible is going to be. Yeah. Nutrition's also going to be big. I mean, what I will tell you, I'm not like a licensed nutrition coach or anything like that. Um, but I think my biggest advice for you when it comes to nutrition is to either one, like speak to someone who is like a professional with nutrition and say, Hey, like, I'm going to be doing this amount of running. This is yeah. what the plan looks like. Do we have any advice on nutrition or like, just do like your own research and like find like a nutrition plan that works for you. Um, yeah. I can tell you though, is like, you know, with running, you know, you definitely like you have the ability to eat more, but like yeah. at the same time, that doesn't mean to like, I should. Yeah. 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 No, I know exactly what you mean. Yeah. Yeah. So, I, I'm, like, I'm kind of doing a calorie um deficit diet at the moment okay just like watching my calories as best as i can mm -hmm. trying to stay under you know i think 1800 at the moment okay. um a, a a day and so i think that combined like the reason i lost so much weight in college is i only i never ate i only ate two meals a day and i would go do a ton of cardio with rugby so i like lost it pretty quick because of that mm -hmm. for sure yeah i mean the calorie deficit thing like from my knowledge like i know lots of people do it it's a good way to lose weight for sure what I will tell you though is when you start incorporating the running into it, it's gonna make it a lot more challenging. You're gonna yeah. feel weaker. For me, like and yeah, like I run a lot more right now than what you're gonna be running. Um, but like still, like, you know, I weigh 165. Like I, I consider myself to be in pretty good shape. And I'm probably eating like 24, 2500 calories a day. Yeah. Um, so just I mean, that would be that would be my ideal. Like I loved the middle of the rugby season because I could eat the worst thing possible not gain any weight and i would still lose so if you know if i could ever get to that point where you know that's what i'm i'm doing a day and it's fine then that would be the ideal yeah i also love to cook and i love to eat so for sure and same man like yeah. dude, after this marathon yesterday like the amount of food i ate like it was disgusting but like that's <laughs> yeah. It. Like, yeah doing something like that you can reward you're still burning so much and everything yeah. yeah exactly so i mean it's something we could also like talk more about and one thing like my like Instagram DMs are always open. So, and I, as you saw, like, I'm pretty quick as far as like, answering. Yeah. um, I, this isn't my full-time job. I mean, I work a full-time job myself outside of it, but like, you know, I'm pretty good at like checking the run brighter thing and yeah. like, rules to grow this. So like, I will make sure to help you as quickly and as much as I can. Um, if I were in your shoes and like, again, like I'm not a, like a licensed nutrition coach. So like take everything I say with a salt, a grain of salt, yeah. but like, I would consider, um, you know, just assessing like the first week, first two weeks, like how the running is going with the calorie deficit and if yeah. like, taking away from like your running and like you feel really weak during the running and like Up the amount I'm eating lightheaded. Yeah. I would try to like 
start eating a little bit more. Oh yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, but that doesn't mean like I think there's a like a balance. I think for someone yeah. like 2,500 is probably if I had to guess like where you'll want to eventually be. But I will let you do the judging on that. Um, but okay, cool. So you know, I think for you, at least for the month of what what I'm going to do, I'm going to make a plan for the month of November. This is going to be not incorporating any sort of speed training. And honestly, we might not even have you really doing much speed work at all until, you know, maybe like early December, first or second week. Of That's December. fine. Yeah. And they'll yeah. probably be like one or two workouts. And then like the race, like we'll have you kind of see how you do with that. Yeah. It'll kind of be like your time trial in a sense. That'll be good to have that. Yeah. But it's, I think it's all about building an aerobic base for you and like just getting you comfortable running like a few miles without feeling like you need to walk. And then I think the losing the weight that's going to like come naturally and hand in hand with this. Um, so yeah, I will, I will get to work on this plan for you. The nice thing is like, I have YouTube videos that essentially explain all the workouts. So I'll like send you the links to all of them. I think like our first, which by the way, I'll look at getting the plan to you probably by if, if I can get it to you by tomorrow night, that'd be great. I'd say the latest yeah. Wednesday, because I, I want you to like start getting yeah. this and like have someone to go to and like have some structure. But regardless, this week, like I think we should have you run like twice. And oh, then yeah, works. next week we'll have you go. Well, yeah, next week we'll have you go probably three times. And then I think we're going to have you go like three times consistently throughout the, the training through December. Yeah. We'll kind of evaluate and see how you feel. I think what's going to be big for you too is outside of those three days though, just like doing as much as you, you can. Um, do you plan on like, do you have like a gym membership or? Um, I have a gym in my apartment building. It's not great, but it's doable. I was also thinking about doing like hit at in like my apartment. Okay, cool. Yeah. I mean, I think outside of the, the three days that will have you start running after the first week. We're, I, I would recommend like one day of cross training for whatever it is you like. So whether yeah. that is walking for 30 to 45 minutes in a given day, like outside of like the normal walking that you would do, um, whether that's biking or weight training or hit workouts or playing sports, you know, I think three days of running and one day of other activities, that is going to be really, really big for you. And if you're mm -hmm. doing that, then like, from a fitness standpoint, you're really setting yourself up to like gradually lose weight. Now, yeah. what, what I will tell you is like with running, you're not, I mean, like if you're just solely in a calorie deficit, like that's a really quick way to like lose weight. Yeah. With running, you're going to, what's great about it is not only going to allow you to lose weight, but it's also going to allow you to maintain the weight. Yeah. But, you know, it does take, it, it does take time, you know, and there. Yeah, is, yeah, of course. Yeah. So just, just understand that, but like, I'm here for you, man. I'm like here to help and make sure that you're able to lose the weight and then like maintain it. And then really yeah. running for as long as you, you know, want to work with me and that, you know, I'm, I'm providing value. Um, so that's really that. Um, it should be pretty simple. I'm going to send you like a, a Google spreadsheet, which will have like the workouts will be nice with it is it's collaborative. So like you can write like comments about how things are going if you want. But what I think you'll like the most is like you can check the boxes in the Excel sheet as you complete the workouts. Um, like I said, as a reminder, like if you just like have like any questions about anything, like shoot me a DM. I'm here to help you. Okay, Are there sweet. any questions you have like at this point or anything else like you want to mention that I can do to help um, here? Um, I pronate and I have like, oh, you can't see it because of the blur. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, so I have this insole. I have obviously the other one. And then I use the uh, Asics gel Kino 27. These are kind of, I could probably get more use out of these, but I kind of just thinking I'm going to bite the bullet and get a new pan. You know, if it's raining one day, I'll use these. Um, my only issue with them is that like, it's a big, it's a hard impact on the ground. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I saw that like the new one, like the 29 has more foam, but um. I'm also tempted to kind of go back to the store and see if they have any other options. What, yeah. what would you be? I know you're not always supposed to switch when you find a good shoe that works. Mm -hmm. Like my only gripe is that it can be a hard hit on the ground. Yeah. I mean, well, on the comment of you're not supposed to switch a bit, if it works, like for me personally, I always change my training shoes, not because oh, yeah. 
not because I think it's the best idea, but to allow myself to like gain more knowledge and understand more about different shoes and be able to like have these conversations, right? When you go to the store, are you asking, are you going in and being like, hey, like I need a new pair of running shoes. What should I get? Or is it like you're going to the store and you actually like have a shoe that you think you'd be interested in based on how it looks or whatever? I mean, I like the the Nike like Zoom, the big one with the really thick sole because it looks comfortable. Yeah. Um, and it looks like it'll have a, a soft impact. Um, I went to a shoe store that was recommended by a family friend who was a foot doctor. Okay. And they had me walk and they said, oh, you pronate, you need, you need these. And, you know, these are the good shoes to use for disability shoes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. No, because that's, that's always my biggest piece of advice is like, you know, for first time runners who like really want to commit to it, it could be a little pricier, but like going to a running store and like having them actually evaluate your feet and then ultimately getting a pair of shoes that are recommended. Yeah, no, that's how, that's how I got these. Like they were like, use these ones. Um, I think they gave me one of the options, but they highly recommended these. Okay. Cool. Um, yeah. So I might, I might just go to back then and be like, Hey, like, you know, I know there's a new one, but this one had a really big impact. Like it would, it, I that felt the ground very hard. So, yeah. So yeah, literally that's exactly what I would say you should do is go there, tell them about your experience on the shoe, tell them what you liked about it, what you didn't like about it and see if they have a, a newer model of that one or a different type of shoe, whether that's a six or another company that I have, I have videos everywhere. So like you saw me on, on TikTok. You obviously, yeah. have, I have YouTube videos. So like what's, I, I post all different content, whether it's motivational entertainment based videos or educational, which like educational is obviously like really what you're looking for probably. Yeah. But like on YouTube, I have like a lot of those training videos. So I'll send you links, but like okay, sweet. Check out the other content there. Um, you know, I think what's really underrated with with running and this doesn't work with everyone but like watching like or listening to a lot of running content whether that's like me or someone else that inspires you like i watch all sorts of different runners all the time okay awesome it's like a really good thing you can do because like those days that you feel like oh i don't really feel like doing this workout it's really good to like just kind of find a way to like get yourself motivated right yeah yeah and i think like having this plan that's going to be one way that's going to motivate you Two, having some accountability from someone like me is going to help but then also like having something that in the moment in real time can motivate you maybe when i'm not talking to you or you don't see my video like that's also like really um i think helpful so some things to keep in mind there but yeah i mean keep me updated on the weight loss journey as much as you'd like i mean for me like it's always so great to hear like I helped someone and they were able to lose X amount of pounds. So like, feel free to let me know about that stuff as it goes. Definitely. Um, but yeah. And if, if we, I know I said like, we'll plan on kind of meeting after that first race, but like if after like the first couple of weeks, there's, you know, you're having some like major issues committing or if there's like, a question that needs to be like, you know, explained a little longer than like a, a message on Instagram. Like you, we could have a conversation on the phone. We could set up something else. Okay, like, awesome. Yeah. Like I'm happy to help you as long as, you know, I'm available and everything like that. Um, but yeah, I mean, I'm excited for you, man. Uh, really appreciate you reaching out for one and looking to obviously like improve your life with running. Cause it's really done so much special things for me. I mean, for contacts, like, I don't know how much of my stuff you've seen. Obviously it sounds like yesterday was like one of the first things, but I was at a point in my life where I've been running for like 12 years, but mm. I was at a point in my life where I kind of fell away from the sport and I was like only doing it once in a while, but I was overeating severely. Yeah. And, um, you know, I ended up at my highest weight in my life, like four years ago mm. and, getting back into running consistently and like having different races that I've signed up for allowed me to lose 40 pounds, which, you know, that was, that was big for me. And like, yeah, really confident in myself. It's really changed my life in so many different positive ways. And, you know, I really hope you can have the same for yourself because like, you know, it's, it's so great. And uh, there's so many different milestones and different things that happen with it that you're going to really love. So that's really all I got from my end. Um, Again, I, I can only say this a million times. If you have questions, let me know, reach out. But is there anything else I can help you with before I let you go back to your night here, Alex? Um, no, I don't have anything off the top of my mind. I probably will, so I'll DM you when I do. But at the moment, I don't. Definitely do.